A very pleasant evening to you out there. Many thanks for joining us on another edition of the program National Talk on Effa Television International. My name is Joyce Jakada. We're live on Facebook and YouTube at Equa Television International. Tonight, controversy has trailed the $150 billion trade deal signed by the federal government of Nigeria with the European Union. Last November, the European Union, its 27 member states and 79 member states of the Organization of Africa, Caribbean and Pacific states signed an agreement in Apia, the capital of the Pacific Island country of Samoa. Hence, it was referred to as the Samoa Agreement. With the new agreement, the parties are expected to better equip to address emerging needs and global challenges such as climate change, ocean governance, migration, health, peace and security. The disclosure over the Samoa deal sparked reactions online with many opposing what they believe was a recognition of the lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender rights, which is contrary to the laws of the land. Recalled in 2014, then President Goodluck Jonathan assented to a bill outlawing same-sex marriages and gay relationships, making LGBT unacceptable and unlawful in Nigeria. Reacting, a former lawmaker, Shi Usani, in a post on X said African states should not accept loans or grants from any country, group or group of countries or international institutions that came with demonic conditions antithetical to our culture, religious faiths and values. All African countries, including Nigeria, who appended their signatures should go back and unsign the Samoa Agreement. On the contrary, the Information Minister, Mohamedou, Idris said Nigeria signed the Samoa Agreement in the best interest of the country after extensive reviews and consultations. In a statement on Thursday, he said it was ensured that none of the 103 articles and provisions of the agreement contravenes the 1999 constitution as amended or laws of Nigeria's and other extant laws. On National Talk tonight, I'm being joined by Mr. Dunasen L.A. Dangbile who is a research consultant and is here to give us perspective on National Talk. Good evening and welcome to the show. Yeah, good evening. It feels good to have you, despite your busy schedule, and yeah. appreciate your Thank time you on the show. Me. Thank you. All right, um, quite unfortunate and starting on a very sad note. Today, um, being Friday, here on Plateau, like in just a, a secondary school, talking about St. Academy, mm. like building collapse and student got trapped got report and news of how that some have lost their lives, some are the emergency units and just draws one's attention to people's people that were actually responsible to monitoring the structure. A lot of questions Nigerians are asking, like when you go on social media right now, people are just traumatized, like children of GS one, some GS three, some SS and in fact a family of four like in the same school lost their lives like today and mm. it's just a sad one i, I don't Very know sad. if you have a take on on what actually happened today yeah it's quite an unfortunate mm. uh, uh situation mm. or kind of that we find ourselves in, in the plaza today mm. but it just kind of tells us one thing that uh, mm. somebody didn't do his job mm. uh, very well i know a lot of uh, people will start blaming Mm -hmm. uh, the proprietor of the school, the owner of the school. Mm -hmm. But in as much as that may be the case, we may have to consider the role of government in mm -hmm. all of these government agencies that are responsible for uh, supervising mm -hmm. uh, buildings in, in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So somebody didn't just do his job well. But I know mm -hmm. uh, after today, the government will come out to be proactive, <laughs> uh, kind of going on mm -hmm. checking buildings mm -hmm. that they should have checked. So, you know, it, it kind of makes the citizen to begin to uh, wonder what, whether or not our government uh, after action kind of a government mm. it is when something happened mm. that you see them kind of taking uh, steps to uh, to change the situation but mm. we should be we should have foresight we should be, begin to look at uh, situations before they they happen and mm. prevent them mm. and when you go around the, the, the city of Jos for example you find a lot of buildings including some hospitals you will see the building you don't have to be an architect to know that the buildings are substandard. Mm. So when you look at some of our buildings today, uh, in the city of Jos, some of these buildings are, are substandard. So it just tells us that somebody is not doing his job. It's really well. quite, quite unfortunate. So it's unfortunate that today yeah. we've lost a lot of lives mm. and some of them are still lying in the hospital with all mm. kinds of degrees mm. uh, of injuries. But one thing we can say for now is to pray that God comfort uh, mm. the families and friends of 
-hmm. those who have lost their loved ones, mm -hmm. children, parents, and, and whatnot. Indeed, indeed, because yeah. I, I mean, it's really devastating. Thinking very, of the fact that this is not so even the first time that we're hearing of building collapse. You think that proactive measures are going to be taken to avert this from happening. That's right. I That's mean, right. we're talking about school, and we know that, the, like, not just school, but every building, yeah. like, people that are responsible should do what is actually needful. It's mm -hmm. just so sad. And just like you said, we, we pray that God comforts the immediate family and comfort as Nigerians as whole, because if you're human, this affects you as well mm -hmm. so let's go straight into the the, the cross of the discussion we're talking mm -hmm. about the recent revelation about the Samoa um, deal mm -hmm. and this is not just uh, something that just happened overnight mm -hmm. like um, first there was the signing in sometimes in November 2023 and then in June again and just last Saturday mm -hmm. the Minister of um, Budget uh, talking about Bagudu Atiku came about like trying to talk about this budget and Nigerians actually react signing of this deal I mean and Nigerians reacted to it and the the, the the crux of the matter of what is actually generating the whole of this controversy mm -hmm. is actually Article 2.5 of that agreement that parties shall systematically promote a gender perspective and ensure that gender equality is mainstreamed across all policies. And people are asking, is it an indirect way to actually intrude or bring in LGBT? And then another crux uh, in that particular agreement is Article 29.5 that talks about parties shall support universal access to sexual and reproductive health commodities as well as health care services. And people have been reacting to that. We've seen the likes of um, uh, Shi Usani, Nigerians have taught like gone to their social media handle to actually question some of these contentious like aspects uh, even members of the house of representatives have even called on the federal government to suspend implementation of that signed um agreement but i would quickly like to get your your view people are asking is it a matter of religion is it a matter of value what exactly is the problem with this um samoa uh, deal so i would just like you to give us perspective give us an understanding of this deal yeah, thank you again for, uh, for, for that question. It's a very interesting mm. uh, uh, subject now in, in, in Nigeria. So it's taking the, the minds of a lot of Nigerians from uh, the economic condition, the present economic condition to exactly. the, the, the Samoa <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. ag agreement. But one thing I can say for now uh, to begin with is that the, the Samoa agreement is deeper than most Nigerians uh, uh, think about it. Mm. Uh, the, the, the thing is, just like we were talking about the, the case, the incident in, in, in the plateau today, um, we don't look at this issue from the, from their root. It is when they start uh, when they start bearing fruit, then we begin to pay attention to uh, to the fruit. But uh, a tree is made up of the root, mm -hmm. so the, the Samoa Agreement is rooted in something deeper mm -hmm. than our protests can stop. And so we need to kind of uh, begin to look at where is this thing coming from. And the Samoa Agreement started in you know all the way in Cotonou. That is what is called the Cotonou Agreement. True. Sure. And so if we want to have a, a kind of a comprehensive uh, uh, overview of the, the Samoa Agreement, we may have to go back to the Cotonou Agreement. And the reason why the Samoa Agreement was, the signing of the Samoa Agreement was delayed, because it was not signed at, as, uh, uh, at the time they planned to, to sign it. And the reason was because uh, there was a very uh, clear clause that most uh, uh, nations, African nations in particular, uh, rejected, which has to do with the, uh, with, with the LBGTQ uh, 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 close. But the, 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 the LBGTQ, the reason why uh, Nigerians are kicking against uh, this LBGTQ clause is because it's, it, it stands uh, kind of against our moral uh, values. But we may have to kind of, uh, uh, kind of take a shift from the Samoa Agreement to begin to look at moral, morality in, in, in Nigeria, to be, uh, to be precise. Morality is not an opinion. Morality is not an agreement. It is not uh, my opinion or your opinion, and it is not what we agree upon that becomes morality. Mor morality, as far as religious people are concerned, morality is an instruction uh, from God, and he has written this instruction in our hearts and in, in the scriptures. Yeah. But today, when you look at Nigeria, you look at what is going on in the country, you look at lifestyle of people, you begin, you begin to see that we have turned morality to opinion. So morality today is becoming an opinion mm -hmm. as far as a lot of Nigerians are concerned. So that is why you, when you, when you say one or two things, uh, people are quick to 
uh, uh, to kind of uh, kind of put the phrase before you that everybody is entitled to his own In fact, uh, people opinion. would tell you morality is relative. What you consider yeah. right is wrong. So as long as mm. morality is, you know, we turn it to, to, to mm. we've changed it to be an opinion, mm. uh, definitely we will come to a point where uh, LBGTQ become a become normal in, in, in Nigeria. So it's, it's something very deeper uh, than we, than, bigger than the Samoa, the Samoa uh, agreement. And, and I can tell you today for, uh, for a lot of Nigerians, and particularly the older ones, if they were told uh, 20, 30 years ago that the lifestyle of Nigerians would be what, would be what it is today, they will, some of them would not believe it. Mm. And, but it is what it is today. Mm. And the reason is because a lot of moral va values in Africa that we, we consider morality, mm. Today they have been changed to legality, and it is not everything that is legal that is moral, mm. and so it's a big issue. It's very deep than most uh, Nigerians uh, think about. And as long as we practice liberal democracy, uh, LBGTQ will become normal in Nigeria. It's just a matter of, of time. So if we don't want, the, it's bigger than uh, it goes beyond the Samoa Agreement. Mm. If we do not want LBGTQ clause, we may have to begin to. Uh, go back and retrace our steps to begin to look at and begin to define what morality is and begin to make a distinction between morality and legality so everybody knows its bounds. Mm. But what do you expect is, is what happens uh, when, when politicians are the leaders of a society. Uh, it happens. Mm. When, when religious leaders are pushed aside, uh, something like this normally, normally, normally happens. But the Samoa Agreement, in, in brief, again, is, is deeper. Okay. has deeper roots than most Nigerians. You, you keep emphasizing uh, it's actually deeper. Very but, deep, but, but very you know, deep. I, I would like us to just look at the matter like as it was presented. Yes. Now, when you look at this deal, like uh, the agreement aims to pr promote sustainable economic growth. Yes. It aims to address climate change, mm -hmm. enhance social change and development and foster peace and security, which mm. are issues that bedevil Nigeria as a country. Mm -hmm. Do you not think there is an issue of interpretation rather than um, maybe how people are seeing it? Because there are, there are a lot of debates around it. Because going by Article 2.5, it says that Parties that are involved shall mm. systematically promote gender perspective. Right. And, and, and when you look at gender perspective, it's just about equality in terms of having male and then female, female. like literally. Mm -hmm. So, and then gender equality, even though the European um, Parliament actually observed that um, way back in t November 2023, um, when this whole um, thing was signed by member states, it was more of they didn't look at dark clouds that talk mm -hmm. about gender identity mm -hmm. and then equality. But it was later, the provision noted that member states were reluctant to see that particular foundation. But the agreement, because it mentioned sexual orientation, gender identity, which a lot of people imply LGBT mm -hmm. rights. But you see, it was later expunged and replaced with gender equality. So do you not see it as maybe meaning well for Nigeria? looking at the fact that we have issues around insecurity, peace, issues around climate change, and we need development as a nation. Yeah, it's, 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 very, it's very interesting, uh, some of those uh, uh, points you've, you've, you've mentioned. Mm. Uh, th these are all problems that uh, most, or if not all, African countries are, are faced with. Mm. And so the, the third world countries face this, these challenges. We need, you know, we need every, all these things that they the, the mention. Mm. And so if, if a nation uh, Nigeria is a producing nation, for example. Mm -hmm. So that completely tells us the state of our economy. Mm -hmm. And as long as Nigeria remains a producing, uh, a kind of a reproducing nation, sorry, uh, we are bound to sign such kind of agreement because it means that we may not have what it takes to take care of our citizens and their needs. So if we, if we, if we, if we're a reproducing nation, what that means is that uh, a, a good size of our economy or you know, our, 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 the money we use to kind of take care of our citizens comes from outside. And the one who gives you the money actually dictates how you use it. Mm. So if, we, if Nigerians want to stop this agreement from being signed, we can stop it today, but we may not sustain that. Mm. And, and the reason is because our economy is not strong enough mm. uh, to fight uh, this kind of uh, proposal. So if we want to fight this proposal, it is time for Nigerian citizens, again, to pressure the government to develop our economy, uh, to make Nigeria a producing economy, not a producing economy, mm -hmm. so that we, when our economy is strong, it is that economic strength and power that you will use to kind of reject such kind of proposals that are coming from uh, powerful uh, nations. But if we don't have 
the economic strength to kind of resist some of those things. We can resist it only for a while. Mm -hmm. And this, has, this is something that protests alone uh, uh, will, not, will, not, will not solve it. It is time to begin to push the government to make Nigeria mm -hmm. what it should be. But as long as our economy is, being, is dictated by, by foreign powers, mm -hmm. You know, you, you expect things like uh, I, li like this to happen. I mean, so I, I like everything is revolving yeah. around mm. around economy. So economy is used uh, to to kind of get people uh, kind of endorse some of those things. Mm. What do you make of, for example, uh, when if, for example, that during COVID nineteen that that, that uh, you know African nations were denied uh, the right to produce uh, the, the the jabs that would be used to kind of take care of the vaccine, the, the, the virus, and the reason is. You begin to ask why? Why do why are Africans denied the right to do that? So, if, for example, n there is a virus and, and Nigerian citizens are dying, there is no food, and people are, are struggling to survive, mm -hmm. and then the people th where we can get solution to this problem mm -hmm. lies with people who uh, who endorse this thing, and then we are saying, can you please help us with uh, with the vaccine to help our citizens? They may decide to say, well, the people who produce this vaccine, they said they mm -hmm. believe. In this, uh, in this, in these, and these values, mm -hmm. and if you want such and such a vaccine, mm -hmm. you may have to endorse. Then we give it to you. Mm -hmm. So automatically, if 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 we remain as a reproducing nation, we will, some of these things we cannot stop it. It will happen. So one of the ways to stop this is not for government to say, okay, we are not going to sign it. Is for the government to be serious with our economy to improve the economy when the Nigerian economy is so strong. That we that we cannot we, we, we decide whether or not to to receive aid uh, from outside. But development in Africa, development in Nigeria, even our African Union and ECOWAS, they are being funded by foreign powers. So if they are funded by foreign powers, automatically they decide how they use these funds. So we don't have control over our economy. If we don't have control over our economy, equally we will not have control over our values. Like well said, you know when you talk about. Um he who pays the piper dictating the exactly, tune and then exactly. um, having an economy that is not actually strong. At the end of the day, you, everything can just just be baggaged, like pushed right. into the country. Now, you see, looking at international politics, mm -hmm. like certain factors are actually key. You see population, like an economy that is actually working. Technology mm -hmm. is also key, like in international politics. And mm -hmm. most of these developed countries or uh, um, countries that are, that form the UN security, for example, yeah. like they have the powers to do and undo because we are talking about he who pays the piper. Yeah. Now, Nigeria, for example, there have been agreements upon agreements yes. and all is geared toward like development, like improving the economy, mm -hmm. talking about climate change mm -hmm. and all of that. And yet the question is, have, have the situation changed? Mm. Because a lot of people have raised concern about the next generation. Mm -hmm. I'm not even thinking about the next generation right now, the present generation. Mm -hmm. Like things that we're thinking will happen in the future are already happening now. Mm -hmm. I mean, Nigerians, there are a lot of Nigerians going through hardship. Mm -hmm. Some can actually barely feed. So with all of these agreements that mm -hmm. has been signed, like this is not the first agreement. Yes. Like agreement upon agreement. Even though I know you had already started highlighting the fact how we can overcome some of these things. Yeah. Like, what do you make? Like, are, isn't there other ways that we can change this narrative apart from these agreements? Yeah, we, we've gone so deep into the waters of, of secularism. And, and one thing about secularism is that it's not, it's not in a haste. Uh, secularism takes time mm. uh, before it overcomes. It's like a cancer. It, co it comes slowly and slowly mm -hmm. but we are in, in a situation where we can describe it in Nigeria that the future is at stake mm -hmm. in the present so o already we can at least predict what will happen uh, mm -hmm. to Nigerian moral values in the next 20 years in the next 30 years and when you begin to look at the policies that have been implemented uh, in our schools mm -hmm. uh, these days they are policies that again are relegating our moral values to uh, to the background and the, the, our moral values in those days in school they are in the forefront but now they are relegated and so education is one way we can we can we can fight this. But the problem again is our our educational system has been hijacked by uh, by values of, or principles of secularism that today we have reduced morality to what each person thinks morality uh, is. So it's about individual opinion, mm -hmm. not about whether or not this is the standard. Mm -hmm. So education can be a, a, a way that we can uh, we can go about this because it it. 
economy is, you know, depends on the level of our education. It's there, when you go to Nigeria National Policy on Education, it states clearly that no nation developed above its uh, uh, standard of education. So mm -hmm. we are where we are today because that is where our educational standard has brought us. So our education, our education in Nigeria is still, uh, is still the colonial uh, education of repeat after me. I, I refer to it as a repeat after me education. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we don't train thinkers, we train people who, uh, who act like robots. And that is why we have a lot of massive unemployment in the society because our universities, they produce job seekers mm -hmm. instead of producing thinkers who will change uh, our society. So, and if, if the more we continue to produce, uh, 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 we produce graduates that are fit uh, this, is a, this, is a, this is a common narrative that they, that they fit into uh, the Western uh, labor market than they fit the Nigerian labor market. Because here we are looking for thinkers, we're looking for people who will, uh, who will produce things, mm -hmm. not people who will use things. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if we want, to, we want to change the economy, it begins with the educational system. We have to uh, change it. And again, from the, when you look at how we do education in Nigeria, mm -hmm. from age zero to seven, what do we do with these children? What do we do with them? You, you know, we are supposed to teach them values, social, moral values, how to live and behave in society. But when you come to, when you go to best Nigerian primary schools and nursery school, children at this age, we teach them statistics, state and capital is a common is a common curriculum. So we teach them statistics and capital, even though we, they don't even know what a state mm -hmm. uh, entails. So at the end of the day, we t we focus on literacy. We don't focus on training them to be citizens that we want them to be. Mm. So if we, if Nigeria want to change this, changing the economy begins with changing the economy. Mm. Uh, and changing the economy begins with changing the education. So if we, if we want the education to change, the economy to change, we may have to go back to our education. And I, when I say education, I'm not looking at tertiary institutions because when we say education in Nigeria, the government, all people, attention is on the tertiary institutions. Mm. But tertiary institutions, they use what they are given. Mm. And the, the, but the primary school, we need to pay attention to the primary school. Mm. That is where uh, we can change uh, things. That is when we begin to instill national values, if, mm. if there is something like that in Nigeria. National <laughs> values that will, that will lead to, you know, a kind of a thriving uh, a society. But it, it's a very complex situation. It's a very complex situation that we have found ourselves. And Unless we go back to the drawing board, and, and when we go back to the drawing board, I'm always concerned about the, the person who will hold the pencil mm. uh, to do the drawing. So we go back to the drawing board, we have to be mindful of who will hold the pencil mm. to do the drawing, and so, so that we can redesign uh, the, the society, the Nigerian, uh, the Nigerian society, because a lot is at stake, mm. and we cannot afford to, uh, to, to have the future to be at stake in the, in the present. We have to fix uh, certain things, and if we don't fix certain things, one thing I can say, I will continue to repeat, is that Nigeria will practice, will allow these things that we are afraid of mm. uh, to, uh, because, because we don't have the power to stop them. And the power to stop them lies with the economy. Mm. We have a weak economy, what well, that means we don't have the strength to stop these things from happening. Mm. But if we have a strong economy, we can fight it. Mm. Uh, it's possible. I mean, uh, it's, to just, fight it's it. just really disturbing because, like I said earlier on, this is not the first time we're seeing agreements being signed. This yeah. is not the first time we're seeing a lot Nigeria and then other countries going into mm -hmm. certain deals and yeah. all of that. But at the end of the day, nothing like there's actually nothing to show for it yeah. or maybe at the uh, advantage or benefit of few individuals yeah. but you, you just start thinking of when with all of this thing end like when can we also give aid to all of these <laughs> countries because going by international politics you barely see any country coming to your aid or any uh, organization international organization coming to your aid without interest mm. like it's, it's just a, a matter or a case of interest yeah. and when they, they they can't be like because people are already talking about the uh, the, the money that is involved, involved and that is yes. why for some huge money actually. yeah it's got about 150 uh, dollar billion, billion dollars and then so so people are talking about the fact that should we like at the detriment of our values our moralities mm. at the detriment of our constitution what is actually obtainable allow some of these things to come in like the a lot of times you want to ask question do we not read beyond the agreement or people just lead us just go into agreement and that's why i would like to say that it is not just about the signing of this deal mm. but like 
do we go deeper into all of these things to see how it's going to benefit the the the, the, the common man on the mm. street and it's not only about the deal also or looking at the benefit but the people mm. that are actually people, involved yeah. because sometimes some of these deals are well intended mm -hmm. i tell you because it, it, otherwise some of the interventions we have in nigeria they are glaring there are things that we can see project by some of these international organizations mm. we can see them but one of the problem, I think, it, it has to do with leadership. Mm -hmm. Who is handling all of these things? Yeah. Some of these things come, and then are, are they actually well explained? Mm. Nigerians will always ask questions because we have laws, we have constitution. And yeah. I would like to take your mind back to um, the 2014. In 2014, then President Gulob Jonathan actually assented to the bill that mm. was out, to outlaw same-sex marriages mm. and also gay relationship making lgbt mm -hmm. like unacceptable and unlawful in nigeria and i think this is the the what a lot of people that have been arguing and contending giving perspectives are actually anchoring on yeah. and we know we have um the law uh, 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 nigerian law section that talk about same sex mm -hmm. saying that it's actually prohibited and if you go to section five it's talking about the penalty mm -hmm. that it is actually involved but yeah. and all this conversation all these arguments all these reactions is all get toward this and people are saying we already have law mm. so why are you accepting something that contradicts the law the but uh, the nba came out <laughs> and said we went through all of these things and yeah. it's okay I, I don't know if you have something to say about the perspective now of the nba and jabba association we went through it and we assented to it yeah it's, it's a matter of uh, interpretation mm -hmm. it depends on how the nba interpreted the uh, the, the clauses in, 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 that, in that agreement, mm. and uh, it depends on what uh, framework they are using to do the, to do the interpretation. Mm. Uh, because are they using uh, the, 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 the secular framework to do the interpretation, or they are using mm. uh, moral framework, which is it based on religion mm. or based on uh, democratic uh, uh, principles? So we may have to ask a lot of questions as to uh, as regard the interpretation of the of the nba so the fact that the nba uh, say that there is no problem it doesn't mean that there is no problem because it depends on uh, their interpretation uh, of, uh, of of those of those of those clauses when we when you say human equality or uh, human right whatever it is we need to ask to what extent mm. uh, to what extent and then yes nigeria have signed uh, a bill that prohibit distance but the question is is it sustainable how can can we sustain uh, what we have, what we have, what we have signed mm -hmm. uh, as, as as a nation. So, and again, when you look at what Nigerians, the the, the complaints by a lot of Nigerians today, you begin to ask whether or not uh, the, the national orientation agency is doing its work mm -hmm. to uh, to orient the citizen about the about this about this uh, this law. And you know, they, they will also say yes, they are doing their best. They put billboards, they do advertisement. And things like that but a lot of nigerians don't have access to billboards because billboards are urban cities thing mm. uh, urban area you don't find billboards in villages they don't put billboards in the villages they don't put uh, and rural people don't have access to social media or they don't have time for uh, for that they are busy uh, trying to kind of uh, find what they can that can you can survive so mm. so we, we need to begin to look at the role that uh, these so agencies such as the noa uh, are playing in in all of this and then the issue of sustainability. How do we sustain uh, this? And then the issue of interpre interpretation. You see, what happened, what is happening in Nigeria today, it is because in society, the people that, lead, that should lead society, those people that were leading Nigerian society before now, were not the politicians. Mm -hmm. They were the religious leaders that were leading mm -hmm. the society. They are the custodians of morality, not politicians are not custodians of morality. Mm -hmm. And the issue is because in democracy, when you look at the Western world, what is happening, they were not, they were not here. Mm -hmm. you know, some of them didn't believe that what, what things that are happening in the Western world will happen uh, today. They didn't believe that. Mm -hmm. But because the government, in cases like this, most of the time, government play a neutral role. So we are saying that if when Nigerian government say that they are neutral in this, we're going to have a big problem. But we are saying that if we're going to, if we if we want to fight this or if we want to really solve this Samoa agreement uh, issues, we may have to put the religious leaders mm -hmm. at the front mm -hmm. of, uh, of 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 the discussion, not politicians, because politicians they they would do whatever you know that. This. How do we define democracy? 
we say that democracy is the government of the people, by the mm. people, and for the people. Now, when you analyze this definition, is that everything revolves around the people. Mm -hmm. It's the government of the people, they own the government. Mm -hmm. It is by them, they establish the government, and it is for their own benefit because they decide wh how and what the government should do to them. Mm -hmm. Now, at the, in this definition, you don't find anything like religious mm -hmm. or, you know, in, 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 in it. Everything revolves around the people. people. So when the people, you see, morality goes beyond agreement, but when the people of Nigeria, for example, the majority because democracy works with the majority so if majority of young people in nigeria or nigerians now said okay we want morality to be to be relegated to be an opinion when they agree that we want homosexuality to be uh to be a, a normal lifestyle in nigeria the religious leaders can say no to that because in our definition of democracy religion is not part of it god is not part of it so the moment the moment we put our religious leaders in the background, mm -hmm. things like this are bound to, uh, to happen. So this discussion, uh, you know, this discussion and, 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 our, and our fight against uh, this bill should not be led by politicians or lawyers, but it should be led by religious leaders. Mm -hmm. They are the custodians of morality because lawyers will look at what is legal. And I, t and I said earlier that it is not everything that is legal mm -hmm. that is moral. Morality and legality are not the same, but what democracy, liberal democracy is doing is that it's changing morality into legality. And at the end of the day, when you change it into legality, it is the agreement. It is what the people agree that becomes morality. So when Nigerian citizens tomorrow agree that they want homosexuality to be a lifestyle in Nigeria, the government have to endorse it because that is what the people want, because it's their government mm -hmm. and it's for their own benefit. And that is what they decide uh, to have. And that is why I'm saying what we need to do at the moment is to put the religious leaders in Nigeria to lead discussion uh, about this agreement, interpretation of this agreement and discussion mm -hmm. about this agreement, because this is talking about we're talking about morality here, mm -hmm. not whether or not it is it is legal because morality and legality uh, mm -hmm. they might be similar but they are not the same thing but you know some people might disagree with you talking about religious leaders being at the forefront in terms of this um, agreement because a lot of people have come out to say that they have compromised like during elections a lot of nigerians as we see we've been misled by even our religious leaders so yeah. how do you separate this or um, maybe cases of compromise now with religious some of the religious leaders that like apparently have actually compromised. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's a fact that uh, some <laughs> of our religious leaders have compromised in mm. recent time. But the fact that some of these religious leaders have compromised, it mm. does not negate their importance or significance in in discussions such as uh, mm. such as this. Mm. So yes, they have compromised. Some of them, not mm. all of them, mm. but we still have uh, a, a trustworthy. Uh, religious leaders in the country who we can call upon to lead mm -hmm. uh, uh, this kind of conversation. And I am calling again on the religious leaders to come out. This mm -hmm. is your conversation. This is a conversation that sure. religious leaders mm -hmm. should lead, not politicians, mm -hmm. because politicians are not the custodians of morality. Mm -hmm. Religious leaders are the custodians of morality. And the reason I said that is because I said morality is not agreement. Mm -hmm. So that completely rules out any uh, any legal uh, a side to that maybe lawyers should lead the conversation mm. because it's not about agreement it's not what the people agree mm. morality is not an opinion mm. that completely rules out the politicians in the discussion so morality is an instruction and as people that believe that there is God mm. and as people who believe that there is God uh, who created us uh, in his image, and Nigeria, majority of Nigerians are religious people, so uh, mo most of Nigerians believe that we are, we are created by God. We are not product of, of evolution. Mm. We need the religious leaders to come out. Mm. Come out and tell us where morality lies. Mm. Is it an opinion, is it an agreement, or is it an instruction? And if it is an instruction, who is the custodian of certain instruction? And that leaves the religious leader. But the, 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 I don't know, I don't know, but I think the religious leaders are silent. And they have reduced their pulpit to the the physical church or moxes. The pulpit of a religious leader is everywhere. It's a, it's a mobile pulpit. So they need to, they are social advocate. That is one of their major roles. Mm. And I want Nigerian religious leaders to play that social advocacy role that they have. Mm. So, so that we can, because they are the one that will lead the fight. Mm. 
the citizens can lead the fight. They can lead the fight to the extent that uh, they are exhausted, to the extent that they, they don't have the economic <coughs> power. Mm -hmm. But when the religious leaders come, Yes, they have compromised, but they have a significant role to play yeah. uh, in this conversation. They need to come out and redefine uh, morality and then explain to Nigeria what morality is. It goes beyond opinion. I, I mean, it's actually really clear that the whole conversation and the argument revolves around values and, yes. and uh, morality and yeah. even religion because mm -hmm. uh, um, LGBT, anybody that hears about the, the rights of lesbians, mm -hmm. gays, um, transgender, bisexual, it, it's for, for African countries mm. or Nigerians, like it's it's almost like what is this? Like yeah. this is unacceptable. <laughs> like we are not ruling now that there aren't people that are, but is unlawful yeah. in Nigeria. And so apparently it revolves around morality, morality values, yeah. and Moral even values. our laws yeah. because we have law in place that mm -hmm. is actually against that. And that's why people are, are asking. There is need for clarification when you talk about human rights to mm. what extent yeah. when you talk about gender perspective and mainstreaming mm. to what extent because before now it was gender identity that's right and IG, uh, lgbt like mm. apparently falls under that category so now if all of this conversation revolves around morality should we disregard the our quest for economic growth the need to address climate change and enhance social development and of course foster peace and development because enshrined in this deal is the need to address all of these issues yeah, yeah. like the federal government um through the minister of um budget and national pl planning kept emphasizing that when we, we when we start implementing all of this mm. deal like it's going to be it's going to impact on our economic growth and you talked earlier how that not just you saying, but we can all feel the dwindling economy mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. we need help. That's right. <laughs> so should we disregard all of these because of our perspective on the gender perspective, mainstreaming, and then the human rights or the issue around LGBTQ? Yeah, you know, when we, when we talk about development, sometimes we have to uh, ask ourselves mm -hmm. the fundamental question. At what price? Mm. It, it, developments come with price. Mm. They, they, have, they have price. And oftentimes our politicians, uh, when they see opportunities like this, they do not ask themselves at what price. Mm. Uh, and, and the Sam Samoa agreement it seems to show that uh, at the, pri the price is, is, uh, it will take our values uh, mm. uh, away. And again, the issue that we, we have uh, with this agreement, like you've, you've noted earlier, is that oftentimes we've signed a lot of agreements. We've had all kinds of you know, mm. deals that should have made uh, uh, Africa uh, you know, first world countries today, I mean. but but <laughs> but the issue of corruption is there, which true, we don't want to true, go into. True, true. Uh, so it is the same politicians again when they get access to these funds. Uh, the question is, what do they what do they use it for? Mm. Even the the so-called sustainable development goals. The question when you go to most of the structures that they have uh, uh, kind of uh, built, they they, they they are not sustainable. Mm. Uh, some of them are not being used uh, mm. today. So. It's a, it's a question that we need to ask ourselves, mm -hmm. at what price? Mm -hmm. Now, there are two prices. The easiest one is to, to sign the deal, get the money, develop our nation, and then it's going to take away our, our values. And it's not going to take our values tomorrow or next year or in 2030. No, secularism is not in a rush. Secularism takes time. It's like a cancer. It goes slowly and slowly. But before you realize it, it has taken all over you. So there's, there's nothing you can do again uh, about it. And that is why I'm saying that the religious leaders should come and tell us what is really happening because they will discern where this thing is going gonna, is gonna to lead us. Mm -hmm. And this, the, the second price is that we need to work hard. Mm -hmm. We need to look within us. How can we develop Nigeria, you know, by Nigerian, from Nigeria, with Nigerian resources? A lot of nations that are giving us help today, they develop not by it, they develop by looking inward. So why, why do we want to be different? Let us look inward. We have the, we have the capacity, we have the potentials, we have everything it takes uh, to make Nigeria a first world country from Nigeria mm. without getting aid. And that is why most economists would tell you that the aid are dead aid. Some people call them dead aid. Mm. Aid don't develop a nation. Uh, what develop a nation is the people. And that is why I'm saying that oftentimes when we go to the polling, you know, we go, we go voting, uh, we, we, we are enticed by the, the plans they have for the economy and mm. whatnot. But I think the fundamental problem of Nigeria is our mindset. Mm. We do not have a common belief as mm. people. Mm. 
that today, you know, they change the national anthem, so uh, tango for that. But I, I think it's a contradiction. We change the national anthem, and the Federal Character Commission is still standing. Mm. So it's a contradiction. Mm. Federal Character Co Commission is contradicting the present national uh, anthem because what is ruling Nigeria? Tribalism, sectionalism, regionalism. We do not. That is why Chino Achebe once noted that you hardly find one position in Nigeria that is occupied by the most qualified person. Mm. And the reason is because we have sacrificed merit on the altar mm. of fear representation. Sure. That is what is guiding us. So at the end of the day, there is nothing like national consciousness. Mm. So it is when we, when we want to solve this problem, we have to go back to the foundation, mm. begin to build national consciousness, instill this national consciousness in the citizens, in the children. When you ask a small boy of six years, when, if you were the president of Nigeria, what will you do? His focus is on his village, on his family, mm. on his neighborhood. It is not on the country because we didn't put that in the child. Mm. So it's a big issue. And our educational system have a big role to play uh, in, in all of this. So do we want to go the easier way, mm. which is be signing this agreement? We have signed this agreement. What is the result? Mm. Do we want to go the easier way to sign the agreement? Or we want to go the hard way, mm. which is... Retain our values, mm -hmm. but work hard. Mm -hmm. Now, so our politicians, politicians seem to, 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 to have kind of chosen the easier way, mm -hmm. which is the agreement. And then Nigerians are now saying it is going to affect our values. Mm -hmm. So the politicians should have said, OK, we are not going to sign it, but we're going to go the hard way. And we're going to go the hard way. This is how it's going to, it's going to be. All right. And just to, talking difficult. about politicians, I would just like you to just chip, I'd like to chip this in now. Yeah. On Tuesday at the lower chamber, like about eight, eight members of the House of Assembly, mm. like we supported this motion that the, the implementation of the Samoa agreement or deal should actually be, sustained. be sus suspended, Sus suspended yeah. until all the clauses that uh, a lot of Nigerians mm. have reacted to is being like clarified and mm. all of that. But I, I, I would like you to speak on like what you make of that particular action of course people say oh they are the representative of the people and mm. all like they are they were actually talking at the house like i'm speaking on behalf of my people i represent how many million people and all of that so what do you make because even though there are also counter arguments still at the house because some people said no it's a matter of understanding i didn't see anywhere that it's mentioned that there's uh, LGBTQ uh, or like it's going to be supported mm -hmm. that no maybe people just lack understanding and should just go get clarification <laughs> and that is why some counter arguments that's what they are saying the presidency also say, said that they actually consider the constitution and it is not against the values or even the, the religion mm. or, or like it won't contradict even our laws mm. so what do you make of all of this position the uh, members of the House of Representatives yeah. are saying suspend the implementation until there's clarity. Mm -hmm. Some representatives are coming out to say, um, no, it is you that lack understanding. This thing is geared toward development. Mm. And then uh, presidency is also saying we have considered the law, we have considered our values, all what we are doing like is towards development of the mm. nation and we mean well for the people. While some Nigerians are on the street, some are touring social media and saying this is demonic. It <laughs> must not be accepted. And some people are even asking, must we take loans and grants? Yeah. But like you said earlier, can we sustain ourselves without mm. all of these yeah. things? So I would like you to respond to this. Yeah, this is, this is when I think uh, these are some of the issues I think that Nigerians can hold uh, their representatives uh, accountable. This is one accountability. But the problem is, again, is that when you go to the National Assembly, mm. their voting system, mm. they refuse to use the technology voting system mm. where every Nigerian will see what his uh, representative is voting for, either against or for the motion. So they prefer the, the, the nay and the I. So <laughs> you don't know who Who's is saying, saying nay. nay and you don't know who is saying I. So Nigerians don't, don't know how to hold their politicians accountable. But if they are using technology, when you press a button, it will read that mm -hmm. the member representing, uh, uh, the senator representing Plateau South or uh, a member representing uh, Basa and, and Just North mm -hmm. voted for the motion. So it will read, and the people of that constituency will know what their representative voted, mm. either for or against the motion. Mm. So the, the, I think the, the, the National Assembly, they, they, they refuse to use technology so that it can help kind of aid Nigerians to hold them uh, accountable. But I think these are some of the issues that can help Nigerians to hold their representatives uh, accountable. Yes, this, this, this agreement is about development. Mm. But it, what I kept saying is, 
at what price? Mm. And we will, we, we will get developed. But the issue is, you know, when you, when you sign this agreement, it's like, uh, it, it, you won't, there, there won't be a time tomorrow you come and say, after we have developed your nation and we now say, can you sign this one? Because as part of our agreement, it has opened a door of engagement. So tomorrow when we say, you know, because of our agreement, can you, can you sign, can you introduce this into your, uh, into your nation? You can say no to that. Mm. So these are some of the things that Nigerians are, are skeptical about. Does it, does it have uh, other hidden clauses that we do not uh, have idea about? Because mm. we were not there. Uh, when when the discussions were held about this agreement, yeah. uh, but so the, the issue of clarity, Nigerians want to know clearly: are there hidden clauses? Are there clauses that tomorrow these people will come up and say, okay, because you have signed the Samoa Agreement, attached to it is such and such a thing, and that is what Nigerians are running away from. But we like the development, we like the, the benefits mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is attached to that. But the question we are having is that some statements mm -hmm. are not clear mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in the clauses. And Nigerians want clarity. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think I like what the, what the National Assembly did to, to ask that, 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 that the implementation should be suspended mm -hmm. uh, pending uh, clarification. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm saying for a proper clarification that will reveal all implications, hidden implications of all this, I suggest we include religious leaders in investigating and interpreting these clauses so that religious people, scholars, will tell us what are the religious or implication of these clauses. The lawyers will tell us the legal implications and whatnot, but it can go as deeper as telling us the, some of the moral implications. So we need religious leaders, theologians, scholars in this so that they can tell us what is the, the deeper uh, secret meaning because it has, it's multifaceted. Mm. This, this agreement is, is multifaceted. So we need to approach it in, in, in a, in a, in a, in a wide-ranging mm. uh, way so that we can, we can kind of reveal everything that is, that is in there so that the Nigerians, every Nigerian will know that this is the implication for the next these 20, 30 years, this is the implication of such an agreement. So Indeed. I think it's, 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 it's important that mm. uh, the implementation is suspended pending a clarification and we want clarification that is unambiguous mm. uh, you know so we don't want ambi because the, the, there are a lot of ambiguity i think that's uh, one of the, the areas that people have been talking about we don't uh, exactly. want ambiguity like exactly. let it be simple keep it simple keep let it us simple. understand and keep all it straight of that. to the point very true well our time is actually fast spent want to really thank you for your perspective on national talk like great analysis on the Samoa trade deal signed by the federal government and just mm. like the um Members of the House of Representatives have called on the federal government to actually suspend the implementation. I think mm. governance is just about the people. So That's it right. is very good that leaders take the people along in decision making and policy making because democracy is a theory that the common people actually know what they want and Absolutely. deserve it. Absolutely. So leadership is not about self, but mm -hmm. it is about the people. Mm -hmm. And we really hope that our leaders will actually think of the people as they take decisions, like mm -hmm. not just about the present generation but what will posterity actually remember you That's for right. thank you so much for creating time to be with us thank on you. national thank talk. you for the time and to our viewers out there really appreciate you for staying tuned to equa television international we'll be back next week with another edition on national talk you stay blessed